Burkhalter. Um, she's the mayor of Rennies Renniesville. Sorry about that. Renniesville. Uh, she'll be speaking uh, about Renniesville, our past, present, and future. So Mildred Hiphill Burkhalter was born in Pierce, Oklahoma, and has lived in Oklahoma her entire life. She received her Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and Management from Northeastern State University and holds two master's degrees from Eastern Central State University in Education, Technology, and Educational Leadership. She retired from Ch sorry, <laughs> Chakota, uh, Chakota Public I, I swear, I have it in brackets how to pronounce it. Still, still didn't do it right. Um, in May 2021, after 40 years of employment, she presently serves as chairman of the board for uh, the Chicoctta Creek. <laughs> I'm always going to butcher it. I'm very sorry. Uh, if only Eli Grayson was here. He's been teaching. Um, thank you, Chicota. Thank you so much. Uh, she was elected mayor for the town of Rennesville in 1991 and serves to present. She has been successful in acquiring several grants for the town to fund projects as varied as construction on a community center and town hall, street work, a senior nutrition program, park and pavilion work, street signs, and construction of rental cottages. Thank you so much for being with us today. Good afternoon to everyone. And I have to make a correction. I wasn't elected in 81. Was that what you said? No. I, yeah, I said 91. I okay, said 91 is Sorry. correct. Um, long time ago. Um, I'm going to talk on Greensville, our past, present, and future. Um, I don't believe that um, there could be a present and a future if you don't think about the past and discuss things that have happened in the past. Um, it's been a struggle for Rennesville, uh, so far as I know, uh, in the past. Um, plus the struggle, you know, has, a, has affected our future. A lot has happened in the past. Rennesville was founded in um, 1902 by four men. Uh, Reverend N.A. Robinson, Ism Foster, uh, William Renty, and um, N.H. Bohannon. They met, uh, decided to create a <coughs> town site for Rennesville, and uh, therefore in October 20th of 1903, Rennesville was incorporated as a town. Um, the land that was advertised for Rennesville was put in, a, a, I don't, I'm not up to date like Keisha is with her uh, stuff, but anyway, I just brought this little uh, deal here, if you can see it. Rennesville was promoted, the land was promoted by Rennesville Promoting Company. People coming from the south, was they were advertised and say, hey, this is about, Rennesville was the best place that you could come and live, and uh, I think the, you could get so many lots for about $100 or whatever else, but, um, that's how it was advertised. Our past, um, as I mentioned, Rennesville was named after William Renty. You probably already know that. But um, records show that Renty did not have any living children or known children. So in order to keep his legacy going on with his name, Rennesville was named after him. Um, Renty adding S and Ville, therefore creating Rennesville. And what's... Uh, I would say sad about it. He only lived to be 49. And you can see the picture on the bottom here. Um, he was born on December 25th, 1861, and he died December 25th, 1910. So he actually died on his birthday. Um, in uh, about February of, uh, and you have to forgive me, my age, ADHD and my Mine is traveling fast, faster than my mouth is speaking. So if you hear me say this and I go back to here, to just, just understand where I'm coming from here. Uh, I'm all over the map. Uh, February 1904, five business houses were in the town, all of whom were doing great business. They were, they call them mess, Mister or whatever else, and in reference to um, 
kind of like a title that was given. William Renty, J.J. Hudson, F.P. Corner, and G.W. Cooksey, and N.T. Williams, they all had a, a wonderful business and supplied a lot of goods to Rennesville. And they were, um, and also, I, I don't know if anybody remember, I think when they came to Rennesville to a meeting, the old public well that they had that everyone would come and get water is right there on the northeast corner of where our community center is located. It was, it was filled in, and hopefully one of these days we can kind of maybe just put a little um, plaque. plaque there or something, or a little statue saying this was the public water that all the people in Rennesville that lived there would come to this public well. Uh, in the early 1900s, um, Rennesville reached a population of about 800 a citizen of more by early 1920s and the 1930s due to economic situation, the population started dwindling. Um, Rennesville was, as I said, was incorporated in 1903. Uh, Rennesville was a home to a depot, uh, the Missouri Kansas Texas Railway, and uh, F.P. F. Brinson. He was elected the first mayor of Rennesville, and uh, after his death, Robinson succeeded Brinson in 1909. William Renty became the first lawman. Uh, during his reign as lawman, he arrested Garfield Walker for drunkenness and disorderly conduct in 1908. Walker vowed revenge, and um, Renty was later later killed, and it's a marker there in Rennesville, someone has built their house there, but Walker later shot and killed Renty for revenge, and I said he died at age 49, taking away not only the marshal, but a principal founder and namesake for the town of Rennesville. The town recovered and prospered for a time. Uh, they boasted a lumber store there, there was a cotton gin, and many other thriving businesses, and there was a doctor and I always have to share this. Uh, we had an older lady that lived to be, I uh, think she was 99, and she passed. And also there was uh, another lady, uh, Miss Susie Mears, that I admired all my life. She lived to be 102, but these were the two historians of our town. And uh, Miss Susie told me a story once about this uh, individual, this doctor. He would travel on his horse and go visit the people in Rennesville. But he uh, had, one time had to deliver a baby. And he delivered this baby, but he was kind of, he had done had him a shot or two or whatever else, so he didn't know what was, you know, but he was able to deliver the baby. But anyway, this lady ended up with two birth dates. He don't know if he delivered her on Sunday. So she ended up with two birth dates, and, you know, when she, identity was there was a you know something there that she um, had to struggle with to find out what uh, it actually was. In 1904, uh, Reddysville High School had an enrollment of about uh, 81 students and I have here the old first Reddysville High School that was erected uh, in Reddysville and uh, and as I go back to Miss Susie again she told me she was a lady that told me the, what the weather was like when the first high school burned, what it was like when the second high school burned, and also the third one and part of it is remaining. You know, she would just get vivid. She said it was, it was cloudy and it was raining a little bit and it was foggy and so forth, you know, and she talks about, a, a, and I'm gonna mention here earlier, uh, later, about F.P. Branson. And I'm trying to go so fast, that's why I'm saying my motor mouth gets it going, but <laughs> anyway, um, the uh, F.P. Brinson, as I mentioned, the first mayor. He had a store in Rennesville, and um, he ended up dying. Someone threw a, a, something like a little bomb or something in the store, or whatever else, and they went in and shot him. And he was a one-armed man, and she talked about he was shot, and this lady that got in the ambulance with him and took him, but he later died from those gunshot wounds you know, that he received. Um, Rennesville was the only black school in the area that would accept black children. Uh, there were students that came to Rennesville High School from Summit, Muskogee, Eufaula, Pierce. Um, 
all around the area where there was not, uh, you were not, blacks were not accepted into the white school. So I ended up moving to Brennan'sville when I was about 10 years old. Um, remember going to Brennan'sville High School and Brennan'sville finally closed its doors to the grade school in 1968, 69 school year. And I ended up uh, going to Chicota and graduating from Chicota. But um, a lot of the black children were disallowed from attending the all white schools. Um, Reedsville was a farming town such as, uh, had producing crops such as cotton and potatoes. In 1904, the Reedsville High School, as I mentioned earlier, had um, 81 children. There were three known churches in Reedsville. Reedsville First Baptist, the Methodist Church, and the Church of Christ. And Reedsville First Baptist is the only church that remains in Reedsville. Um, some distinguished people, as Mr. Hannibal Johnson mentioned, that came from Rennesville was the late doc, Dr. John Hope Franklin, famous historian. He was born in Rennesville and left the area at the age of nine. His father had a, a lawyer business in the Greenwood District because he was not able to practice law around Rennesville and so forth. So when uh, John, Dr. John Hope Franklin was about nine, he ventured to Tulsa and his father's business was one of those businesses that was burned in the, in the um, Greenwood, I mean, the riot of 1921. Um, he mentioned about uh, D.C. Manor. D.C. Manor started the Blues Club Festival the year I was elected as mayor of Rennesville. It is still held every Labor Day weekend. Selby is doing her best to keep it alive, but as, you know, age finally creeps up on you and at some point or another, you know, but she's hoping to reach her 100th blues festival, and she said, I may not be here to see it, but she's hoping that someone will carry on and that one day Reddingsville will mark its 100th uh, blues festival. Uh, he mentioned Reddingsville is near the historic uh, Civil War site in history, the Battle of Honey Springs. You know a little bit about that for black soldiers and <coughs> white soldiers and mainly black and Indian soldiers fought shoulder to shoulder uh, on the front line. You'll notice when you come into Rennensville, there's a little sign that says Rennensville population 66 residents. Uh, we've practically doubled in that sign. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes. 
Because when you order something in Rennesville, you have to put down your 911 address. It won't accept your old physical address. It won't accept the post office box. So therefore, when you pay taxes on that merchandise that you order, it goes into Chicago because it has a 74426 zip code and not our zip code, 74459. So this is one way, and uh, he was mentioned about um, the postmaster. They closed the post office uh, back, I believe, about 15, 16 years ago. So like when that leaves your community and the school leaves your community, uh, you know, it, it's not long before you're practically about dried up, you know. But I have to give it to uh, all the mayors in the room. Um, you know, it's because of their creativity, their determination, their vision. All of them are optimists, and they possess these, all of these type of characteristics. These are why the historical 13 that remains, this is why we're still here. And all from here... to a, a gospel song that my pastor sings all the time, Still Here. And that's what I label all of the historical black towns. And that's uh, one thing that I look at. There are other black towns in Oklahoma. There are other black mayors in Oklahoma. But what's unique about the 13, we are historical. So we're not taking away anything from anyone else. But that's how we stand out because we are historical. Now, a hundred and something years later, we're still here. Um, as he mentioned too, in 1999, our community building was built. Uh, it houses a computer lab. We have a pool table in there. We have artifacts. And on one of our walls, uh, the north wall in the community center, we have a picture of almost all the soldiers that attended Rennesville, well, in the way, let me back up. All students that attended Rennesville High School that later went into the military. We have a picture of them on the wall. And what's unique, there's one woman sitting in the middle of all these other men, but that's a commemoration wall that we have to honor those that attended Rennesville High School. And, you know, uh, some of them are deceased, some of them are still alive. There's a few that are still in Brennanville community. Uh, we've been blessed with a town hall back in 1999, a second building. We were able to receive a grant for uh, street paving. And if you didn't know, I'm slowly coming into the present here. Uh, we have street signs, a park, a pavilion. We have four rental cottages. Someone mentioned about well, what, what you have there when someone comes. But we've been fortunate enough to uh, purchase Four rental college cottages, they're complete, they're furnished, furnished right now, excuse me, I'll get my words straight here, furnished, but uh, Senator Matthews was asking me about uh, the water. We have a couple of them that were having an issue with water. The, the water company wanted to charge us about $2,450 for one meter to one of these little houses, so that was a, a financial obstacle to us. But we're working with EOD, which is one of our, the COG agency in my area that we're trying to uh, maneuver some funds around and possibly get the other water in at the other house. But they've got electricity in them, they've got furniture in them, but they're just not ready to be moved in. Future um, programs is that, most of all, the future you have to have hope, you have to have and see progress, and most of all, you have to survive. And that's what we've been trying to do with Little Black Towns for years and years and years, is survive. Arrhenesville hope one day that we'll have a walking trail, that one day we'll have a, a exercise equipment room. We'll purchase at least 10 more little rental cottages that when people come to the Blues Festival, or to the uh, Battle of Honey Springs, or just for a family reunion, or just want to come to the countryside and sit and get a little peace and quiet, we'll have that. We're looking for, uh, in getting some type of little grocery store there. Selby was working on one, uh, and she, like I said, her plate's full as well, and she haven't really gotten it off the ground, but hopefully one day she will. 
are in your friends will hope to get a little gift shop. So there's future. Uh, we're hope. We have lots of hope. We have many, many struggles and little hurdles to overcome. But long as the mayors of these towns stay determined and stick to it, we'll make it. 